it's dark, it looks a little bit angry. And I can also promise you some squeaking tires and smoking brakes today on the racetrack with the Seat Leon Cupra RST. A special edition with some copper elements. The R not only now anymore as the hatch, also as the estate and with all-wheel drive. And here on Autogefühl, we will experience it together with Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Normal Seat Leon Cupra already almost comes with full equipment, for example, then you also get the full LED headlamps. Always interesting that those daytime running lights, they are basically replaced by the indicator lights when you use the turning indicators. Always looks pretty amazing. Then the R version here comes with those copper style elements. That's the visual part, also carbon fiber lower wing right there. And on the technology side, it is a little bit wider as for the track. And they also stiffened the suspension a little bit. So the same they've done with the R hatch, now also with the RST. And you can still see this one does still have a Seat logo, not a Cupra logo yet. That will then come with the all new generation of the Seat Leon. So this one is basically here now a final last hurrah for this Seat Leon generation. So it shows a black color here today because this one looks the most aggressive. Recently I also heard some comments when someone said, oh, I don't want you to use the term aggressive because it's an evil term, but I think we can really say that about that car, especially here in the R version, together with those copper style wheels, 19 inch right there, also with a bigger brake disc and those Pilot Sport Cup 2 by Michelin, so I'd say you can still drive it on the street, yes, okay, but they're already tuned on the sporty way. Then also with some carbon fiber elements right there in the lower end, the ST here shares the same wheelbase with the hatch, however, it has a longer overhang. Will this have any effect on driving it on the race track? Because here today on Majorque on the race track, I've also been driving the Golf R hatch, so I can also compare it. Other than that, also then everything black in black. There are also different colors available. Not all colors of the Seat Leon range because they want to limit it a little bit for the uh, special Cupra models. But this one would be one alternative. Would you pick it in black or white or maybe in this uh, special gray color? Tell me in the comments. Here we go. Those are four real exhaust pipes down here together with the carbon fiber diffuser really powerful then the copper cooper logo it has also become the real color of the separate cooper brand which is already separated in the cooper taker but here then still with the seat logo to me the normal seat logo looks a little bit cooler in the copper tone than this tribal cooper logo or what's your take on that here we just have an r badge and that's it then basically so you don't have this four drive that signalizes that it's all we drive but I can tell you, it is all-wheel drive. And we will really use it also on the racetrack later on. And I really like this tail lamp design here with the LED signature. This looks really modern. So technology-wise, it's not a new car anymore, but I think from the styling, it still works very well. Let's 
open the door, right there. Inside of the doors, you have this carbon fiber fabric, really interesting, it's also soft. And above that is also some soft touch plastics. Then there's a slim door pocket, for example, for walkie talkies on the racetrack. This is the optional Beats Audio system. It's quite decent, but nothing super special, so to say. Special with this R version, something else. For example, those copper elements here at the air vents. This is one contrast. By the way, also soft touch here at the top dashboard. Then the special Alcantara steering wheel, my favorite. I just love those. And when now someone says, oh yeah, but after a while it wears out a little bit. I mean, first of all, it doesn't wear out that quickly. And you can also, um, you know, have special cures for those to, um, you know, bring them back to life a little bit fresher. And I just love them both in winter and summer times. In winter, it feels warm and cozy. In summer, you don't sweat on that so much. I would always go for a microfiber steering wheel. And I mean, if it wears out of a couple of years, at some point you can always, you know, put a new fiber on it if it really gets bad. But I would still go for it. Then again, the Copa Seat logo and the special sport seats. In general, for the Leon Cupra, there are two sport seats, the normal one with the separated head restraint, and then those ones here, the super sport seats with the integrated head restraint. For the R, those ones here are reserved. Which one? Well, both are comfortable. I think I, for comfort, a little bit more prefer the separated headrest ones, but those ones are also pretty cool, with microfiber on the inside, leatherette on the outside, also a very good mix, which is friendly to the customer and also friendly to animals. Let's get inside. And the good thing here is it is racy, this vehicle, but it's not a super race car where we get inside and, oh, my lower back starts to hurt. It's a normal compact estate. And so you can also comfortably sit in the front. Again, those sport seats, they give you a little bit more support, especially here in this area and also in the, in the shoulder area a little bit. I'm one with this 86 or 6 foot one still leaves a lot of headroom right there. Steering wheel in reach and height, controllable. So again, this is a love story for today. I like to hug this Alcantara steering wheel. Oh, good boy, steering wheel. <laughs> so this might be a new emotional bond to a vehicle then. So this seat here is a manual one. There's also an electric control available if you like so. So yes, some options left unticked, but only some, most others are already ticked for you at least. But I think maybe this would have been one they could include still in this already then quite high price. So let's bring that to life here. Here again the copper color accentuations right there. And I like this split here. It's better than in the Volkswagen Golf where they have this one horizontal panel and then the vertical one right there. So they don't need a separate gap here and to connect this because this one here, the upper part, overlaps the lower one a little bit. Cleverly done. Sport information gauge here, for example, available, but you can also have a hotkey directly to jump to the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that works flawlessly. And when you go to the main menu, you can have this app view, for example, also the GPS. And overall, this system here is kept quite simple. This loading time should be a little bit faster though, but other than that, how to control everything, you don't need to learn it for hours and hours pinch and zoom. Again, reaction times could be a little bit better. This is not the very newest uh, software platform they have in this vehicle here, but you can see here, um, control on the left, uh, lower side, for example, the last destinations and so on. Here again to the full link to the control. You can also connect your phone via Bluetooth, but other than that, down with the cable, then also uh, just, just with the plug. There's also special Cupra mode, also with a button right here for the drive modes. Then it turns up the, uh, the gears a little bit more. The exhaust gets a little bit louder and you still have a separate volume knob. The climate unit is also still classic, seat heating and then here the normal climate control. I like to have it because it's so easy to control than while driving. Also this DSG shifting lever it always comes with the DSG, with a dual clutch transmission. It's covered with Alcantara. You have a good racy grip. The start-stop engine button has this heartbeat. Originally, it was an idea by a Jaguar car. So they had this, you know, Jaguar heartbeat. Here it's maybe like, I'm not sure what an animal a Seat Leon is, but probably a lion then, right? <laughs> that would fit, right? 
pretty obvious. Then in the front part, here is an inductive charging platform together with two normal USB supplies. There you would connect your smartphone then for the mirroring function. Then if we go a little bit lower to the electric handbrake, again copper accentuations around there. This one is the car key and there you also have a small spot for that if you just you know, don't want to let it in your pocket. And well, you know, those cup holders here in the lower uh, part, then they are not adaptive. Mm, they're quite small, not too happy with those. However, I'm happy with this armrest because it's really very well attached. Also one uh, sign of quality and it has a soft leather red cover and still, you know, some, some small room in there. But I think this could also be a little bit uh, more open that you could put more things in there. The RST also comes with digital gauges, so you're quite flexible as for that. Speed, you can see on the right side, but you can also have the GPS view in there. That's quite handy. For example, you can have this one here a little bit more zoomed in, and then maybe the right side map, which works at the same time. So you can have the map right there and in the central infotainment system. That's totally okay here with the car. Also radio or telephone info or something like that. Or maybe a lap timer. Hmm, that could have been a good use for today. You don't want to be there at the racetrack, but maybe when you're going on holidays, the rear compartment. First of all, you can see the same styling as for the front. You're also with this carbon fiber fabric. However, hard pack materials at the inside of the doors, there where they saved some money. And then you have something like a single seat set up also in the rear. It's also beautifully done with this carbon fiber fabric style, microfiber and leatherette. Isofix at the outside seats each. In the middle seat you can still sit but not that comfortably so um, it's maybe just you know for um, very rare and short occasions. You can see those sports seats are quite voluminous. This is one of the dis disadvantages of those super sport seats. You can see you can still sit with four tall adults in this car. That's totally fine. If you want a little bit more leg room and you order a normal Seat Leon Cupra then you could also go for the standard sport seats with a separated head restraint and they then have a little bit more leg room in the rear because they're not that wide. But here in the RST, that's how it is. I think you can still see it's still fine. Headroom also still fine in the rear, so the overall package of the car is actually quite nice. It's not too, you know, not too big. And also the seating comfort here is absolutely fine. So this is one of the key elements. It is a racy car. Not a race car, but a race C car, and you can still very well use it in everyday driving life. And considering you don't have too much space here on the middle seat, um, they put the ground material actually not too hard, so it's actually quite soft still to sit here on the middle part. I mean, why not? So it looks stiff, but it isn't. See, it's quite soft, so that's a very interesting idea. Also some cup holders right there, and there's also a ski hatch all the way available where you can reach through. Other than that, you can flip the seats from here already in a one-third, two-third split. But we can also do that from the trunk. Here we go. So with this hatch, it's really cool to flip this logo. And this is also a matte paint. Really feels very good when you just touch it. Then let's open it right here. You have, you know, some decent amount of space. I also like that they have a very clean solution here for the top cover. Right there, rails on the side, super clean, super high quality and just press it once. And that's it. Also, here, some space for a replacement tire or additional sound system. You can pick that then. And you can flip those seats from here, like this. And you see, they flip properly. That's very well done, pretty cool. And then you have even more space. So, what about the measurements? Here, the length for the normal trunk area. This is about, oh, sorry, wrong side. <laughs> so this is about a meter. Quite decent. Then the width is usually also a meter and there we go. Also, so it's like one meter and one meter both sides. And in the height right there to the cover is about 43 centimeters to the cover. And then if we go all the way through with flipped seats to the driver, then this would be one meters and 80 and of course a little bit longer even up to two meters and a little bit plus when you go for it right there through the middle for example for some skiers or something so under the hood no hydraulic struts 
with a nice Cooper logo right there. Two liter TSI turbo petrol engine, 300 horsepower, and the acceleration figure is 4.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. More grip to the ground here due to the all way drive. Front plus all way drive on demand. Of course, if you use that launch control, then you can bring the maximum performance to that one. Thomas' active driving review, we're in a Cooper mode, and let's go on the racetrack. With the Leon Cupra R ST, the estate. And we're on this circuit here in Majorca. We've been here with the Golf R before, so we can also very well compare that. direct from the steering wheel so have a very good grip also with this microfiber surface that's really nice staying close on the inside I feel it's an all-wheel drive car but of course the focus is the front wheel drive so it's not a really dominant car so maximum of 50% torque to the rear axle in front of us now a Cupra Attacker with Klaus Nietzwitz on board former racing driver so one of my TV colleagues here and well this is not a very fast track but for a compact vehicle it's actually quite cool 300 horsepower right there delivered and of course the all-wheel drive helps me to deliver it somewhat to the ground because just with the front wheels I mean yeah the Leon offers this front wheel differential lock but still I also have some torque on the rear and that helps me to accelerate out of the corners. It brings up the weight of the car, so a professional race driver will be faster with the front wheel driven only car. But it's really nice to have the all wheel drive to give some additional power into the car. This one then, by the way, is the assistance system. So this car is not really meant to be driven on, on the race track because it still has those assistance systems on, so to say. But we have deactivated the ESC completely. We can do that with a button, so that's actually no problem. Two steps, ESC Sport, and here I've deactivated it completely because we are on the dry racetrack and there's really um, hardly any slip or so from the road, so this is totally fine then with me. So I can also have it deactivated. On the road, you would leave it activated. Here, yeah, look, I don't have to steer that much. I really like this direct steering they have. Progressive steering, they call it in the Volkswagen Group, and really gives us good performance. And again, together with the microfiber steering wheel, I mean, it's getting a little bit hot in here also at those temperatures, but I can still remain good grip. Look at the acceleration. 114 kilometers now, 150. I don't want to stretch it here too much. We've also seen the launch control earlier. Very interesting how this goes to 100 kilometers. And well, if, it, if it's an R, do you feel it? Not really. I mean, it's more this special edition. Uh, it's really more interesting in general with this vehicle because it feels compact. It is compact. Does it feel much different than the hatch? Not really. They have the same wheelbase, so it's basically as agile as the hatch. The hatch may be a little bit lighter, a little bit less overhang so yes it is a little bit more agile oh there was some power missing there right maybe like a wrong shift from dsg or something but other than that so far dsg delivers a good performance so the gears are shifted through quite well and also smooth so the key of this vehicle is really it is easy to control easy to steer so it doesn't exaggerate things it really stays honest you know what you're doing even if you're not like a super trained professional racing driver I mean I do have some experience on, on different racetracks around the world yes 
of course, I'm not doing like in this every day like a professional race driver, but still having a lot of fun here in the Cupra. And we also have a lot of G-Force, not only in the sport information uh, disc, we also have some camera equipment on the on the joint still. Yeah, sometimes you don't, you have to carry it with you because we also film on the race track, of course, time to time. Now getting, ah, this is a lot of fun here. Slowly to the outside, now again, hard on the gas. It's really astonishing how much power you can get out of this two liter turbo engines. So, and I think the most interesting thing is, it is a family estate, so to say, and you can still use it on the racetrack and you can have a lot of fun with it. You don't necessarily need a Porsche to do that. However, also think about that fully equipped, this one here goes at about 50K, so that's already very high in the price, of course. Still cheaper than some of the other real <laughs> sports cars you can buy there on the market and the performance we get here is for that actually really decent. I hope you're also enjoying those fast corners together with me. Here's some understeer that push me a little bit to the outside. As you don't have too much torque on the rear, you cannot swing the car around. That would be the last thing missing to feel a little bit sportier. But you know, that's what you get from those Haldex systems. It's not meant to be a race car, yes, but you can see it still works decently on the track. The Golf TCR we tested recently really feels more racy. So this one is here is not the focus on the race track, even though you can do it. The TCR was really astonishingly you know, feeling a little bit lighter, definitely. They have some lightweight parts in there. So if you're using it more from time to time from the race track, then the TCR would be more suitable. This one here more about the special edition colors you have and so on to have something even more unique. And then you can, if you want, still put it right here. So let's listen to the engine, some more corners, and then we'll leave you to the final conclusion. Yin and Yang, black and white, well, that's also something of the conclusion for the day because the Seat Leon Cupra RST can be both a family carrier with a decent trunk, decent space on the rear compartment there for the passengers and also with a nice build quality on the interior, a lot of Alcantara accentuations, so very well thought out and let's say an easy to use interior too, so something you can really use every day and so on, but you can also take it out to the racetrack and show some performance. No, it's not a complete, you know, pure race car and you feel that and when you really hammer it on the racetrack and then you see that something starts um, <laughs> smoking after a while, you may say, oh, maybe the car is also, you know, maybe shouldn't take it too hard. So no, it's not a pure race car, but it also doesn't have to be. However, you can have some decent fun on the racetrack and really gives you always some quite good performance. So as an everyday racer where you can a little bit go for, you know, a little bit faster on the motorway, accelerate out on the countryside roads and so on. Be safe always, of course. For example, with the all-wheel drive, they can also use it when it's wet. As for the acceleration, physical limits, of course, always apply in the corners. But it's a very good neutral and balanced handling. That's what the platform is also is about, and also the size. It's still a compact car, but with, a, as I said, quite good package. Here in the R edition, yeah, it's a little bit sportier, a little bit stiffer and so on, but you don't feel huge differences, I have to say. So to me, this one is more about the styling with the 
copper contrast and I think especially here with the black vehicle and also with the estate it works very well. So is that your dream Seat Leon? Probably one of the last chances to get one also uh, in uh, you know, limited pieces for this edition and again as I said the next time we we'll see the Seat Leon on Autogefühl will then be an all new generation. When that one comes we will of course keep you updated. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was really a pleasure to do this one here together with you. I hope you enjoyed it as well as me, Thomas, and also Jonas behind the camera. And see you next time. <laughs>